came up here with the goal of actually just chasing fish, you know, underneath the mats, underneath the grass. We didn't think there were gonna be any in open water. And so far, all of Scott's success has come from just kind of cruising around and looking at open water. I mean, not what we expected at all, but we sure will take it. Ooh, open water. And we came back here to fish these mats. That's a nice fish too. Yeah, it is. Really nice fish. Get in here. Holy. Get in here. Wow. Look at that fish. I mean, he just don't much better than that there. Look at that. That is beautiful. Oh. Good one. Mm -mm -mm. Nice one. Boy, she is fat. She is, look, look at the belly on her. Thick. That fish is that thick. You think it was a temperature change that brought fish in? I, I think the sun, yeah. It, it was just a just a little little bit of a change, you know, change in weather. It, it's gotten really warm today. It was really warm yesterday, but uh, last week, uh, front came in. It was cloudy, cool, and, um, you know, so we've had two days of sunshine and really warm weather. Um, in the 70s in a row, so I think these fish are just, again, you know, it's, it's pre-spawn. They're, they're getting ready to make their push, and they're just gathering up and getting ready to go in their spawning flats, and that's where we're finding these fish, just right on the edge of these spawning flats. Oh, see, look, Charlie got up because he knows he's getting a biscuit. Holy! You gonna hoist him? Yeah, but he's pulling really good. Yeah. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Get in here. Look at this. Ha. I want to show y'all something here. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you something. See that tongue hanging out of the dog's mouth? That's because he gets a biscuit. Now. Oh my gosh. When you catch a blind crappie. Holy. <laughs> either his lateral line's working overtime or he smells crappy <laughs> fireballs. You make, the, you make the decision. No way. Man, we thought we were gonna only find fish underneath the grass. They're in open water out here. That's another good one. Oh, you see that one? Come yeah, up what with was it. that? That was another fish Holy. with him. Look at this fish. Oh my gosh. Man. It just keeps getting better and better. Look at that. I'm guessing that's a black crappie. Yeah, that's a black crappie. Male or female? That's a female. See the egg oh, sac? Yeah. Just a nice fish. What I use today catching the fish in open water is my seven foot Hypersense Jenko rod. Uh, this little small tiny hair jig. And guys, this is a really small look. That fish, that jig doesn't even go to one joint of my finger. It's a real small jig, but it's very efficient. You know, we're, we're not trying to catch white crappie. There's no white crappie in these lakes that we're fishing today. And so I downsized my jig to basically the smallest jig I had in my box that I could efficiently cast with a least little bit of wind. The line I'm using today is K9 fluorocarbon, high-vis, six-pound test. And as you'll see, I boat flipped every one of the fish today. I've got a net in the, in the boat, but it's put away. I haven't netted a single fish, and we've caught multiple two-pound-plus fish today. Also, uh, during the when we were uh, fishing the mats, I used my Jenko X13. Uh, it's a Tony Shepard Signature Series rod. It's a great uh, single pole, long pole and jigging rod. Very sensitive and you'll see I put this rod through some junk today. I mean, I was banging limbs, uh, you know, getting hung and snatching like crazy. But I paired it with K9 10 pound braid. And, the bra and there's two reasons for the braid. One, when I get hung in, in that mat or whatever it is, whether it's on a piece of wood or a piece of ve whatever vegetation it is, I can straighten the hook out and get my jig back. Two, for zero stretch, super sensitive. And, it, and I don't know if what, this, what I said will make the cut in the video, but there were several times when I was set the hook and I was thinking I was getting bites, but I actually got to thinking about it there were so many fish under that mat, I think the fish were running into the line and it was making me think that the fish was just soft biting the bait, but they were actually just bumping my line as they were swimming, you know, amongst each other. Ooh, look at that hook set. Ooh. 
I was hoping that hook check got the fish, not my head. <laughs> and uh, it, it's holding to be true. Look at the knot in that fish. Charlie, look at this thing. You know what that means, Charlie? You get another treat. Look at the knot in this fish. I mean, geez. Big female. Oh. I didn't see him. But he's there. He was. Man, it happened quick. Mm, mm, that's, mm. A, that's a little male. I know you just said little, but you know what? That's not a bad little fish. Well, you spoiled with what we've been catching you know, back there. Figuratively here. speaking, of what yeah. we've been catching. Yeah, <laughs> he is small. There he is. Oh God, good one too. Good one. Look at <laughs> oh no no no! Come back here! Come back here! Come back! Oh. Gotta get out enough line so I can. Oh swing my him God! To me you guys that. saw that, boy. Look at this monster. Guys, you saw me just pull that fish out of that mat right there. We just pulled up to it. As you can see, I raked out two holes with the garden rake. Just waited a few minutes, let everything settle back down, and that right there. We get a lot of complaints uh, with the fireballs being slippery. Well, they are slippery, but there's kind of an art to it. And I'm gonna show you how to hook these things where it's not so bad. Just reach in and get one out put the top back on so I don't spill them. So what I do is I just grab the fireball between my thumb, my middle finger, and my pointer finger. It's really easy to hook these to hook these fireballs on. Take your jig with the other hand. Just go through it just like that. Nothing to it. Fast and simple. And that fireball will stay on there for multiple casts. You know five six seven eight cast and then you'll you know either you'll catch a fish with it or you'll sling it off on your next several casts but uh nothing to it oh man is it another good one just a decent fish mm -hmm. not a big fish i don't think he's fighting like he's big oh male mm -hmm. them males man they're mean see this one i like because look at the colors on that fish i'm gonna have you turn this direction just because of the camera so people can see but look how look how dark those fish get I mean, yeah how cool is that that's a male. That's when you really know the fish are getting prepared to spawn. People call this their tuxedos because they turn black. That is so cool. Oh, clockwork. I think that's bigger than the last one. It is. Get in here. Oh my gosh. That's hazel. I'm going to show you something else. You guys think. Last time, it was a fireball. Oh now it's the fire God. gel, another blind crappy. Wow, and that's not the same thing. No, the other one was blind in his left eye. Oh my gosh. Today's episode of Potsky Outdoors comes to you from Florida, where, wow, what an awesome day we had. Now, we might as well call this episode Wild Florida Crappie Fishing because this slough or creek inlet or river inlet, whatever you want to call it. It could be seen as many of those things. Absolutely had just a little bit about everything. You know, we ended up seeing a gator, which it's Florida, that's common. Turtles were everywhere. We even saw, and, and I hope the editor lets you guys watch this for more than just one or two seconds. We just sat there for a while and we saw an osprey eating a fish right next to where we were fishing. I mean, it was an incredible scene, so much fun. It actually took our mind off the fishing. You know, we had a little bit of everything. And the scenery back here just kind of brings you away from civilization. It brings you away from the unfortunate things that are going on overseas right now. It brings you away from, you know, thinking about the virus that's been with us the last couple years. And it shows you fishing can bring out the best in you. And it also takes your mind off things that you don't necessarily want to be thinking about all the time. And it just, it's a great time. And that's what we did out here today. Now. We're out here today with Scott Williams of Scott Williams Fishing. And sure enough, he had a great time. Now the goal was, we were gonna come up in this creek and try to fish mats, and we did. And we caught a couple really nice fish in these, whatever you call them, mats, lily pads, grassy areas. You know, we had a lot more bites, we just didn't land them. Very difficult areas with brush and trees and this and that. So all we did is, we went to open water. And literally, we thought all the fish were gonna be under the mats, there were fish everywhere kind of scattered not massive numbers but enough for us to film an episode matter of fact we could have filmed several episodes up here we caught so many fish in the two hours that we were here now 
the great thing about it was all these fish, I think all of them were black crappie and they were beauties. Now what we used is no surprise to anybody. You can see Scott with the jar of fire gel in his hand. He switched back and forth between crappie fire gel and shad fire gel. And of course, when we were in open water, crappie fireballs was the ticket. We used obviously the pink shad and the chartreuse garlic. Use those and you too can have a heck of a day here in Florida. Potsky products are available at sporting goods stores near you. If you can't find the specific color, size that you want, make sure to go to potsky.com. And as a thank you for watching Potsky Outdoors, we're going to show you a coupon code to be used for 10% off your next order.